Hey guys, it's Aoife from Fred Weasley Died Laughing and I'm here today with my very last July weekly wrap up of 2015. Um, I don't know where July went, it went by so quickly, I can't believe it. Um, and I actually read six books this week, so two were novellas, um, so they are pretty short. But I'm still really happy with my reading because I was kind of working really, really oddly. Um, and uh, just kind of uh, most of the day I was working basically so I didn't actually have that much time at home to read so all the reading I did really was on the train and then uh, on my work break. So yeah I'll just get in with what I was reading. So the first book I read this week was Gwendolyn's Sword by E.A. Halpton. Um, I got this book as a ARC copy on NetGalley for a review and then I was also contacted by the publishers um, so asking if I would be part of the blog tour um, which was really exciting. So um, I do have a written review of that um, on my blog which I will link below and I also have a Q&A with the author um, so if anyone is interested in that or if anyone goes on to read the book and wants to find a little bit more about what the author thinks about her characters that is there as well for you to uh, read. So basically Gwendolyn's sword is about a woman called Gwendolyn in 1193 and her husband is with King Richard um, fighting in the Crusades and this is around the time in England where Prince John, King Richard's brother, was trying to overthrow King Richard so there was kind of a little bit of a rebellion going on in England at that time. So Gwendolyn is really different to a normal woman you'd find in an historical fiction because she is the lady of her estate and um, she's no man kind of telling her what to do or controlling her actions she actually is able to fight she fights alongside the men she wears a sword and um, she sometimes wears a tunic and breeches rather than a dress um, so she's just so so different she's really really amazing um, she's very independent she reminded me a lot of Merida from Brave the Disney movie um, so yeah I just really loved her she was just such a great spirit she was very generous she was very kind she had a real amazing gut instinct that she knew when to trust people when to not trust people um, sometimes it was a little bit too good to be true if you know what I mean but I still really enjoyed it and I really enjoyed her kind of lovely outlook on life and how she kind and just kept pushing and kept going every time if she met an obstacle and she's a really great little group of friends as well who all trust her her men trust her with their lives which is great to see um and then queen eleanor um of aquitaine is also in this book i don't know if anyone else has ever read anything about her she was also a pretty a pretty great woman in history for me and um, she was also a woman that kind of uh, overstepped what people might have expected of her she made her own kind of destiny um uh, to the limits of what a woman could do in that time she, i've always read her when she was younger so it was really interesting to read her as an older queen mother so that was really interesting i really enjoyed that um so yeah gwendolyn sword is just really amazing it's just a real kick-ass feminist um, it also has kind of a King Arthur twist in it as well because Gwendolyn is told that she is the female descendant of King Arthur and that she's supposed to go and find his sword and um, his famous sword calibre and to try and rid of the evil um, kind of sources that are in England at the time. So she kind of goes on her own little quest at the same time as trying to save her estate and make sure that her... Uh, brother-in-law doesn't try and control her estate and take it away from her because they keep telling her that her husband is dead and she doesn't believe them she doesn't think he's dead so uh because obviously he's away in a completely different country and they've not heard from him and they don't know whether he's dead or alive um so it's just really good i'd really urge people if they're like in a little bit of uh women kicking butt and a little bit of historical fiction mixed with a little bit of fantasy um, and even if you just like anything to do with that time that era king arthur this is the book for you um it's really really good so i gave it a four stars out of five so the next two books i read were um read kind of a sequel or a novella so i read um the first two of the magnus bain chronicles by cassandra clare um, so I read What ha Really Happened in Peru and um, The Runaway Queen, which are both centred around Magnus Spain. So for What Happened in Peru, I just thought that was a really, really funny, short uh, take on Magnus. Uh, it just made me laugh out loud. It was really, really funny. I really enjoyed it. And then The Runaway Queen had a little bit more, a little bit more of an actual story. Um, it was set in Paris during Marie Antoinette and the French Rebellion. Um, so 
that was really interesting and it was kind of madness being tied up in something to do with Marie Antoinette um, and it was really good and of course the men with black hair and blue eyes come through as well because we all know that is Magnus's big weakness is blue eyes so um, that was great to see that coming through again and again his weakness for that um, so I really enjoyed it and I'm really going to uh, look forward to reading the rest of the Chronicles as well because they're just a lot a lot of fun so I think I gave both of them a four stars I might have actually given them a five but I think I gave them a four stars and after that I read um I read the sequel of Every Day by David Levithan which was another day so I got this as an ARC copy from NetGalley as well in exchange for an honest review so this is basically the exact same story as Every Day except it is told through Rhiannon's point of view rather than A's point of view and um, David Levithan made a really good point at the start of this novel. He said he didn't think of it as a companion novel. He thought of it as a twin. So kind of, as we said, the same story but told through completely different eyes. So I really, really, really loved Every Day. Um, it just was one of those books that really touched me. It made me, I'm still thinking about it, like just different things that made me think of, the way it kind of made me double think about things that I'd kind of taken for granted and I thought it was just it was just breathtaking for me I just really enjoyed that book so I was really looking forward to um seeing about Rhiannon so um I really enjoyed this kind of you know it's kind of a little bit more realistic because A's point of view is that he is um he sees the world so differently to everyone else because of the way he lives so to see the story through Rhiannon you're a little bit like you kind of get why she's feeling the way she's feeling and then you see a little bit more about um, about her and Justin and their relationship and why she's you know, not so eager to break up with him. And you see all those little nice bits of their relationship that A never saw. Um, and you can understand why Rhiannon still thinks that she loves Justin. Um, and then it was really interesting to see how she started to recognise A, even though he was always in different bodies. Um, she could kind of look into the eyes of that body and kind of somewhere deep underneath everything she could see a looking back at her um, and that was really gorgeous um, and then the very end if people have read every day they know what happens at the end of every day so we got um another couple of minutes uh, after that um and how Rhiannon reacted and how you know other people in the story reacted to Rhiannon um and I really like that though I would have loved more of that because I'm just greedy like that and I just want more <laughs> um so overall it was really really good and I gave it a four stars out of five and then for a book that has been on my bookshelf for over a year I finally 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 read The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Bracken um, and I loved this book. I really, really loved it. For some reason, um, I always thought this book was kind of about demons or fairies. Uh, I think because of the symbol at the, on the cover of the book. I just feel like it looks kind of like a demon symbol. Um, like a demon's mark. Some kind of demon thing anyway. Um, so I was really pleasantly surprised when I realised it was actually kind of a more dystopian book. So this book kind of uh, tells the story of Ruby who has being one of these children that was affected by this sickness that was killing a lot of children uh, through America. And the, a lot of the children who got the sickness but didn't die, they've ended up having these kind of weird abilities that are separated into colours depending on what they can do. So she is sent away to this camp, she's taken away from her parents and sent away to this camp that can only be described as another version of a concentration camp. These children are separated, they're treated really, really badly, they're told not to use their powers, they're punished for using their powers, um, and one day Ruby ends up being able to escape this camp and she she meets up with these other kids who can do different um, things as well who are the same as her they escaped their own camp and uh, things happen and they end up all coming together anyway and they're trying to find this safe place for them to be and to try and reconnect with their parents and their family um, to try and tell them that they're okay and they're out and they want to see them again, obviously. So um, I really loved Ruby's character development in this. She started off as a really shy girl who was afraid of herself, afraid of what she would do. She'd hardly talk and she ended up becoming this real kind of leader. Um, I really enjoyed that. It was just so great to see her grow and to see her become more confident in herself. 
Um, it was one of these books that for the whole thing I was completely on the edge of my seat. I didn't know who to trust, I didn't know what was going to happen next. Um, I kept expecting, like, there were certain points of it where I was kind of waiting for the bomb to go off. I knew there was going to be some kind of big explosion and I was just waiting for it and it was really good and I really loved the ending. Um, it reminded me a little bit of something that happened in the um, Cattle Sisters Chronicles by, uh, by Jessica Spotswood. It was a little bit similar. So um, I am really looking forward to reading the next one. The next one looks like it's going to be even better. There's going to be more character development with Ruby. Um, we're going to find out more about the different kind of non-government organisations and what they want and um, in the book. So I think that's going to be really good. So I am really looking forward to it and I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. And then last but not least, I um, did the one of the last books I got for my TBR shelf, which was Flip the Zombie by Jessie Peterson. And if anyone has been following my uh, YouTube for a while, you know that I read Married with Zombies, um, which was the first of this book, this book series um, a few weeks ago. And I absolutely adored it. I absolutely raved about it and I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. So this is the second book, which is following the married couple, David and Sarah. It's a few months after the events of Married with Zombies and now they're kind of trying to build out a business as being zombie busters and taking jobs from people um, for rations to kill zombies in certain places. So this didn't quite have the same effect on me as Married with Zombies did. Um, I think it was probably just because I kind of knew what to expect at this point between David and Sarah um, and the kind of zombies in this book as well. So uh, I did give it a 4 out of 5 stars, I still really enjoyed it. It only took me a day to read, it was only like 250 pages, so it was really quick to get through. Um, and as you can see, it's a pretty small book, so it was really easy to fly through. Um, David kind of annoyed me in this, he was being a real hothead. At some points I didn't think he was being really fair to Sarah. But the um, again, the, the sequence of events was really exciting. Um, lots of action, always lots of action, loads of zombie killing, which was great. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. And again, Sarah and David's relationship was lovely. It's so much stronger in this book because they've kind of gotten over those initial marital issues that they were having with um, in Married with Zombies. So they're kind of really trusting in each other. I kind of like a little bit more action between them, like a little bit more like sexy scenes maybe, just because like they're a married couple and it would be nice to see them really kind of... I don't know, be with each other, I guess, like kind of a more sensual maybe, instead of like a quick kiss here and there. So I would have liked it maybe a little bit more of that, but maybe we'll get that in the next book. Um, so yeah, a four out of five stars, I really enjoyed it. And again, if anyone is looking for a fun, uh, quick paced zombie read, I would pick these series up because they're really, really good. So yeah. Um, so at the moment I'm going to read, I'm reading Magonia, which was my TBR pick of the month, so I still haven't gotten around to that, so I'm reading this at the moment. I'm hoping to get it finished by Sunday night, Monday morning, because then book two baton starts and I have a whole different books for that. Um, so I'm going to do my TBR now for book two baton and yeah, so I hope you guys uh, had a really good reading week. I hope you had a good week in general and if you have any comments or thoughts about the books I have read and my opinions on them, please let me know. I'd love to know. So I hope to see you guys again next time. Bye!